Ashes of Creation just dropped an insane live stream, diving into the freehold system of the game, talking about how they work, the implications on crafting and freehold placement, what major changes they've made to it since we last heard about freeholds, along with teasing what we could be potentially seeing for the July live stream. And damn, this is a ton of information. I've watched through the video twice now, and there is just so much to capture. And Steven even took to Discord after to answer even more questions and give more information information. This live stream was set up a bit different than it was in the past and it was honestly very beneficial in my opinion. Starting off with a PowerPoint like show going through more details of the freehold functions and ending with some gameplay. But first, shout out to those channel members. Freeholds in the world of Vera have three main purposes to them. To allow players to express themselves with housing, building, and furniture, allow for players to build businesses to offer services such as inns and taverns, and allow for high-end processing, because you are only going to be able to do master and grandmaster rank processing with the right freehold buildings. It's not something that is going to be doable within a node, so players who want to dive into the processing profession and be a grandmaster mount breeder, well, you will want to keep Keep your eyes out on available freeholds from the beginning. As a player, there are several steps to gain access to a freehold. You first need to complete a quest to unlock the ability to bid on freehold permits, and once permits are acquired, you can lay claim on available freehold land, which are predetermined parcels within a node's region. And then you can build your freehold within that land parcel. Your freehold will take up to about 1.5 acres of land, which is increased in size as they originally were only half an acre, but with that, they are more limited than they were originally going to be availability wise. Steven stated in Discord that they are currently targeting the low thousands for freehold plots in the world. So with a server that has roughly 10,000 players on it, probably around one tenth of them will be able to own a freehold. But those plots of land availability will change based on the world as nodes will be sieged, freeholds looted, and the opportunity for new ones to pop up, which will make wanting to defend your node from invaders a priority because you never know how easy or hard it's going to be to get a freehold freehold again. Freeholds will have a real estate component to them as well though where players can actually sell their freeholds to other players so it creates a unique market within the game as well. It seems that within Alpha 2 we'll be testing freeholds in the Riverland, Desert, and Tropics to start which may or may not be a tease to which zones Alpha 2 starts out with although I'm hoping for a bit more than this it wouldn't surprise me that if we just start out with these three main zones and more are added throughout the testing. Within the freehold there are various types of buildings that players can place. You will start out with a shed for storage, which is where you can keep the materials needed to build the first main building on your freehold, which will be a house. There are small, medium, and large houses, and depending on what you want to do within the freehold may be dependent on the type of house you choose, as the house size will take up some of the space that you could allocate to other things such as farmland and workstations. Intrepid also showed us some concept art for houses of each race. Besides the Tolnar, the look of the house is depending on the blueprint you use though, so if you have a blueprint that has a dwarven house to it, you're only going to be able to build that house unless you apply a cosmetic skin. If you have been following Ashes at all in the last few years, you've probably heard the big cosmetic skin question come up time and time again, which is finally being answered. Cosmetic skins are split into three categories, housing, artisan, and business. And these skins will be able to be applied to buildings within each type of these categories. And if you don't know what skin goes where, well, fear not, as Steven said that next week, Intrepid will be dropping an article to explain where all the previous cosmetic skins will lie within the freeholds. There are also taverns, smithing buildings, farm plots, a lumber mill, and a whole lot more that can be built by the players. Some of these buildings will have upgrade trees as well. We saw the ability to add feathered beds to a tavern, which grant additional rested XP and increase your max rested XP when using these beds. Things like this will help entice players in the area to stop in and see what you have to offer on your freehold, as it could benefit them along with putting some gold in your pocket. We also saw the lumber mill building, which was eventually able to be upgraded to have a arcane golem assist with the process of the mill, reducing resource costs, fuel, and gold costs of the processing by 20%. Obviously, a lot of these are work in progress and could and probably will change before we actually get our hands on the game. The most exciting stuff though is through crafting. Although we didn't see any crafting gameplay, we did learn a lot more about the system. Each crafting and processing profession will have an associated artisan building with it on a freehold, so sorry gatherers, you're not getting anything here. As I said earlier, freeholds are the only place for the high-end processing ranks. But for those seeking the crafting profession, players can craft up to journeyman crafting on freeholds. 
holds. I'm not really sure how I feel about processing being restricted to free holds to want to hit the max level in it. It seems like it's going to instantly isolate a part of the community, but at the same time, it'll make those husbandry mounts much more rare and really boost the economy a bit and give more of a gold sink into the game for those who want to access those processing items. Diving into what we all care about though, the actual gameplay, we see Steven and party start out in some ruins in the Riverlands because, you know, we're never getting in out of the Riverlands. But we see this resource around these ruins called Halcyonite, which can be mined and used to make weapons, decorations, and jewelry. And this resource is why they chose to place the freehold here to make it pretty accessible for their crafting needs. We get a glimpse of these massive mounds in the background, giving quite a breathtaking view of Vera, which just show how beautiful and massive the world in Shepard is making is. And we see a glimpse of the work in progress crafting UI, showing us a bit of the crafting profession, such as weaponsmithing, carpentry, arcane engineering, leatherworking, jeweler, armorsmithing, scribe, and tailoring. You can also see the equipped tools in the UI as well, which all seem to tie in a gathering, along with various weapons Steven could craft on the right. Again, all work in progress. Steven and the game then head into the freehold, which is pretty centered around farming, and there is some wheat, corn, tomatoes to gather for crops. There is also some cows that can be milked as you pull a magical stool out of your back pocket, sheep that you can shear for their wool, chickens whom you can take the eggs from and mock with your chicken emotes, and pigs which can be gently patted right before you slit their throats and take their hides and meat for crafting. As a player though, you don't have to be a farmer. You can cut back on some of the farm space for more workstations, such as the metalworking station we saw, or you could have a bigger house or set up a tavern that you've always dreamed of for other players to come visit and all sorts of things along with many more building types. Speaking of houses, we do see inside the house on the freehold as well, which has this cool COVID statue on the table in the middle that was given to all players with an active account by some point in 2020. There is also a functioning bed that grants rested XP and there will also be prop items that have gameplay usage and items with various other buffs as well. Oh, and a storage chest that has a Tetris style system for resources which i absolutely hate it just looked out of place and it seems really to be a waste when you could just reduce the amount of material inventory capacity or have a weight management system of some sort it feels even more odd when you note that your regular inventory doesn't have this system and just the raw resources menu so hopefully this gets tweaked down the road but if not it's really not the end of the world either this live stream absolutely blew my expectations out of the water for the month and it's great to finally see more functioning systems in the game. But if you thought this was huge, well, wait until the potential stream coming up for July, as Steven teased that we could in fact be in a node showcase next month, which is by far the largest system in the game, and something that I think will put a lot of players' minds at ease when it is finally shown functioning in the world as promised. If you made it this far into the video, then you must be enjoying this content, so please click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up to help the channel out. Otherwise, comment down below your thoughts on this month's freehold showcase, what you liked, what you didn't like and also give your feedback over on the official ashes of creation form link is in the description otherwise if you're new to ashes and have yet to create an account feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums buy some cosmetics or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of vera and be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come